Hi, I'm Jared. I'm David. And this week on Hood Slappers, we're going to be reviewing the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. When I first started growing hair on my lip, I knew it was time to start shaving. When I got my first job, I knew it was time to start saving. And when I wanted to look successful without actually being successful, I knew it was time to buy a blazer. And if anyone's ever looked into purchasing a blazer, you'll know there are three very important things to consider. Number one is style. Number two is comfort, because skinny jeans only prove that comfort comes second. And number three is quality. And similarly, when looking at the all new Blazer EV, these same three factors will apply. For the new generation Blazer, Chevrolet decided to throw away the rugged association the Blazer has always carried and made it more refined. Unlike previous generations, you wouldn't see this Blazer in action movies like Commando, Fast Five, and The Patriot. Patriot with Mel Gibson? It was in the 1700s, there no cars around. No, no, the Steven Seagal movie. Anyway, what was I saying again? Ugh, now I've lost my train of thought. Uh, but the Blazer, it does look really good. It got 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that again? The face of the blazer has a light setup that could rival any wedding DJ. Who's probably also wearing a blazer with a fancy light show from left to right. Like a dog wagging its tail, the blazer EV will also get excited when it sees you walking towards it. And it'll end here at the illuminated Chevy logo. Much like Helen of Troy herself, I think this could also be a face that launched a thousand ships. Now, I have no idea what that means, but she must have had some face. Yeah. Do you think she would have driven a Blazer? Helena Troy? No, I, I think she drove a Buick Apollo. The high attention to style continues as you enter the interior of the Blazer, canvassing the innards of the SUV with eye-catching design that's both interesting and creative, with all three trim levels putting their best foot forward. Now, this is an American vehicle, so the interior of the Blazer needs to be bigger, since Americans are generally bigger. But some of the design features in this car are out of this world. Like, look at these air vents. Looks like a powerful turbine engine. Let's turn one on. This is very refreshing. But it's not all about style. The Blazer EV also focuses on comfort, but not just the comfort of the ride, the comfort in knowing that it offers a maximum 521 kilometer range, making it one of the best in its class. The comfort of giving you such standard safety features like pedestrian braking, forward collision warning, and lane assist and the comfort in a warranty on the battery and its internal components of eight year, 160,000 kilometers. But this is all boring stuff. Let's get back to David's face. Now, comfort can also be found inside the car. As David mentioned, there is a lot of space inside the Blazer EV, but it also has a list of great standard features. One of the best ones is this 17.7 inch display screen. Now, one interesting thing that Chevrolet is doing is they no longer equip their cars with Apple CarPlay. Unlike other manufacturers, they've decided to create their own unique interface that offers similar apps and abilities. This is a very big step for Chevy. I guess that would make them trailblazers. Yeah, yeah, like, like Mel Gibson in The Patriot. Yeah, yeah. Thirdly, and arguably the most important thing, is quality. And despite what Merle Haggard used to sing about, the quality here is evident. Now, the Blazer EV was voted SUV of the year by Motor Trend, and it was up against 40 other SUVs of its like. And one of the reasons it received this award because of how well it was built. And that makes sense because under J.D. Power and Associates' least problems per 100 cars, Chevrolet as a whole is ranked fifth. They are doing some great things. And one of the most exciting things they've done is under the hood. There is no frunk because nobody uses them anymore. Even Glee sang about them, the frunk, give up the frunk. I think they meant funk. Now let's go for a drive and talk about what I don't like about the Blazer EV some of its features, and what the world is saying about EVs. Just, just please don't turn on the fan. Yeah, my cheeks are still tender.
Well, David, here we are in the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. What are your first impressions? I'd like to know. Mm, I'm, I'm a fan so far. I'm a fan especially of the, of the fans, but no, it's roomy, stylish, futuristic looking, comfortable ride. Yourself? Yeah, it is. You know what? It's uh, I like the screen. I'm not, I don't usually talk about screens, but that's a 17.7 inch screen. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, of all the EVs we've reviewed. I know the Tesla Y was a 15 inch. The Mach-E was 15 and a half, I believe. So we got 17.7 inches. It's 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 functional. It's great, but you also have buttons. It's the whole interior looks premium, but it's not a Cadillac or the Lyric or anything like that. This is a you know a regular car. It's just they did a really nice job in the interior. Really nice job. Now, David, the starting price of this vehicle, there's three trims here in Canada. The starting price is $60,333, okay? But that's gonna get you, I mean, there's no real base models in cars anymore. I, you know, it's just, there's no crank windows in cars anymore. There's no auto or manual locks. So you get a lot of good stuff in your standard version here. So you do get, as I said before, that screen. You also have an 11 inch display screen here. You have remote start. Uh, you're gonna have your uh, backup camera, a lot of great things in the car. And there's actually a little feature in here for any parents out there who have kids. There's also a, a teen driver. Basically, it's a report card for when your teenager drives a car and it rates them on how they're doing. Right. Well, I, I've been doing that same thing ever since you've been driving. I'm taking an assessment of you right now. I'm, how Jared. am I doing? Um, I, I don't think I tell you to the end of the test, but hand 10 and two, please. 10 yeah, and sorry, two. Yeah, no, no, I'm on it, I'm on it. Weight of the vehicle is 6,504 pounds, almost three tons. And that's without you and me inside without the us. car. Yeah, yeah, okay. A little bit more yeah. with, with us in the car. Yeah. Now, it's interesting though, the towing, because this is a heavy vehicle, it can still tow uh, a maximum of 3,500 pounds um, or 1,500 pounds. And it's opposite of what you might think. The all wheel drive is a maximum 1,500, and the rear wheel drive is a maximum of 3,500 pounds. So a little backwards of what you're thinking, but the weight you said it's more than a Chevrolet 1500 Silverado. Mm -hmm. So yeah, quite it's, heavy. It's about the size of a female elephant. Okay, so we know what you do like, what don't you like? Well, I mentioned earlier, let's talk about stuff we don't like in the Blazer. And you know what, now, now that I dig into it a bit more, if you want to turn on your headlights to automatic on or off, there's a little button here. And you know what, it's not that big of a deal. When I first saw it, I thought, well, that's ridiculous. But I touched my headlights once, and that's the day I pick up a new car and I never touch them yeah. again. So that's, that's not really a big deal. I guess one thing is the uh, one pedal driving. It's, uh, you click on it and you can turn it on or off. And as soon as I turn it on, I can already feel the vehicle kind of uh, holding me back a bit. It's a very potent, potent. if I may <laughs> say, um, one pedal driving. It's very strong and it also gives me a bit of nausea when I use it. So I'm gonna turn it off. I prefer not to use it. No. And now the car cool. seems like it picks up speed a bit more. Hey, get that away from that fan. No, I wasn't going for the fan. Well, what are you doing? Anymore. I was gonna show our viewers the uh, navigation. So, like I said, uh, this has your big screen. It's really cool, really functional. It has Google Maps. So again, there's no CarPlay. As you mentioned earlier, David, you have this. Now, what's cool because it's an EV, if I wanna set my destination as I'm driving, um, let's go voice only, Windsor, Ontario. So this is telling me that Windsor from where we are right now is two hours and 49 minutes away. What's cool though, is when I get to Windsor, my battery life will be at 11%. So it tells you what to expect out of your battery life That's as cool. you're driving. Turn right onto Fife Road. I don't actually want to go to Windsor. How do I turn that off? Looks like we're going to Windsor, dude. <laughs> and Chevy of course has been at the forefront of the SUV game, actually the inventor of the SUVs. Chevy was the inventor of the SUV? Yeah, the Suburban Carryall in 1935, I believe, was the first ever suburban utility vehicle. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, You're... Not only was it the first, but it's also the longest in-production vehicle in the world. How long? 1935. It's been continually being made suburban. The Volkswagen Beetle, I think, was I think the it was longest. Three, 1938. It was three years. Is that right? Okay. Suburban, yeah. Wow. And Chevy was formed originally in 1911 by, do you know who invented it? Was his last name Chevy ah, or there Chevrolet? Were, there were two of them. There the Chevrolet Louis, brothers. Louis Chevrolet, who yeah. left after a couple of years. Yeah. And then the guy who continued running company was uh, William Durant. The so, guy, middle name, Crapo. 
His name. Yeah, no, no, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, his name is Crap. I just learned that. Oh yeah. Well, well I'm glad they used Chevrolet. The yeah. other guy's name instead of. <laughs> I couldn't imagine driving a crap old Blazer no. EV. No. This one to me, even though it's in the same segment, feels a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. It feels wider. It feels heavier. There's just something about it that feels more truck-like. Yeah. Uh, it is a more expensive vehicle than a lot of those uh, other cars in the same segment. And Chevy has actually already reduced the price of the car because it was kind of tickling the butt of more premium brand vehicles. And of course, Chevy, the Cadillac Lyric, um, a lot of people would kind of prefer for a little more money to buy the Lyric. So Chevy had to drop the price of the Blazer. So the Altium battery is what we have in this vehicle. And what's cool about it is you don't have to replace the whole thing or, or you know, work on the whole battery as, as one. You can take away some of the cells. You can work on the cells as individuals. This is a very powerful battery as well. Um, it, it, you know, it's very capable of a lot, but the cool thing is that the cell is, uh, it, it can be disassembled, worked on, as opposed to the whole battery. Cost effective as well. So really well done for Chevrolet with their battery ingenuity. Nice. So the car is great, it's comfortable, it drives great, all the good features about it. Why are EVs not selling? That, you know, EVs have taken a bit of a lull and from the outsider looking in, they're saying, well, look, EV stopped selling, no one's buying them anymore. You know, why do we use them? But to the market, the market sees this as a normal trend. So when EVs came out, it's the early adopters and, and the people that are into the stuff that all jumped on the bandwagon. And with anything out there, there's always a gap after that happens. And eventually that the momentum of sales will pick up. And this is a normal market trend for anything that's new. So the people who bought them, they're the trendsetters, they're the early adopters. The trailblazers. The trailblazers, whatever you want to call them, they've got them. And now we're just waiting for that gap to close and then more and more people are gonna buy EVs. It's inevitable. It's how the market has always worked, statistically speaking. Now, David, this is uh, the RS version. Um, there is no Super Cruise on this vehicle. There's a few of those, uh, you know, driving components that will assist you, but there's no full Super Cruise. I think it's a big miss for Chevrolet. I think the Super Cruise should be on every model. Uh, if I'm gonna pay this much money for an EV uh, for the Blazer, because it's a little more, I think the Super Cruise, the autonomous driving, is a huge selling point for Chevy. Mm -hmm. Now, viewers, out of all the uh, EVs that we have driven, of course, are the Ionic 5, the Kia EV6. The Nero. We, the Nero, yes, that's right, the ID4. We have this, the, Mos the Mustang Mach-E. Out of all those, we want to know, what is your favorite EV SUV? Sort of in this category, if there's a favorite that you have, I've said this is probably my new favorite. Uh, I mean, you've only driven the Nero with us, yeah. so... Like no, I prefer this one. This okay, so we both too. agree yeah. the Blazer EV is the best. But what do you think, viewers? Which SUV EV do you think is the best? Put it in the comments below. Now, David, as we drive more and more EV cars, you know, there's phrases and terminology that come up, and it's not always that well explained. So today I wanted to introduce a, a new guest to the show, if I could, and he's going to explain exactly what regenerative braking is. So why don't we bring him on, bring on EV George. Hello. Hey. Yeah. So regenerative braking. Uh, a lot of people have a misconception about re regenerative braking in that you have to have one pedal mode turned on to get regenerative braking. Now, first off, regenerative braking, what it actually is, is power going back into the battery. When you accelerate and you get up to speed, you take in battery power out of the battery. Now, one pedal mode, drive mode, has nothing to do with whether battery power is going into the battery or out of the battery. One pedal mode is just that when you come to a stop, you don't have to move your foot from the accelerator to the brake. You are, you just come to a stop, you let up on the accelerator and you come to a full stop. Uh, now, regenerative braking, when you are coming from, say, 80 kilometers down to a stop, whether you're using regenerative braking or not, or sh I should say one pedal drive or not, when you let off the accelerator, you'll feel the car starts to slow down. And all electric vehicles will have varying ex um, aggressiveness of slowdown, but you can always apply the brake to get more. 
uh, the car intelligently figures out how much it can still regenerate before it has to now apply the brakes. And this all happens automatically. Jared? Oh, whoa. oh sorry. Oh, thank you. Ladies and thank you, George. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, EV George. What just happened? Oh, sorry, I was regenerating. Oh. Where'd George go? George? Huh. E.V. George. Well, it's a lot different than the Blazer I remember as a kid, but it's also a lot more memorable. Plain and simple, I really like it. And you have to dig deep to find something you might not like about the Blazer. But by the time you do find it, eh, Nobody wants to hear about it anymore. It's got style, it's got comfort, and although it's new, it looks like the quality is still there. Now the EV hype might be getting normal now, but Chevy is still able to bring some excitement to the table. So with that, I give the all new 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV my hood slap of approval. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Hey, my Blazer says David. Mine says Jared. Duh. A big thanks goes to our friends at Barry Cullen Chevrolet for allowing us to use this 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. If you're in the market for one, go see them.